Thanks for joining us today. I'm Blakely Thomas Aguilar, Digital Editor for VMware. The hot topic in today's IT and developer world is application modernization. With the rise of Kubernetes and cloud, enterprises are transforming the way they build, run, and manage their application environments. To help us dive deeper into how businesses are modernizing their applications and infrastructure, I'm thrilled to feature the insights of Albert Alberts, architect for the largest telecom and IT company in the Netherlands, KPM. So Albert, a very common scenario today is that businesses, especially in the telecom space, are under a ton of pressure to produce new services, and that pressure can be really overwhelming. What's behind this demand and the pressure to get services to market faster? Yeah, at KPM, we see, we see the market moving. Um, the market is, we are kind of under distress as KPM. Big, we are a big telco, but uh, a lot of companies are moving faster than uh, the, the big companies uh, as we are. So therefore, the, the, the pressure is on the developers to deliver faster. And uh, with the fast de application deployment, um, it's uh, absolutely helpful. But mm, cloud native applications uh, is, is one way to develop applications. Uh, we used to do a big monolith and uh, application development took months. Now um, a new release uh, happens in, in, in a couple of days uh, and even sometimes uh, multiple uh, in one day. So new features can be offered uh, faster to uh, our customers. And that's what the, the, it's really uh, going on at the moment. And Albert, what goals are you hoping to achieve with your app modernization strategies? At uh, KPN, we hope to uh, um, achieve uh, a bit of more of consolidation of our platforms. Uh, currently, we have uh, a lot of departments that are running Kubernetes uh, for themselves. And one of the things we want to achieve is that we have more consolidation of those platforms and pulling them uh, within the hypervisor platform as we can uh, deliver the services from one platform to uh, our developers. Okay, so when you think about developers today, what is the complex environment they're working around and how does that create challenges for them? Yes, so at KPM we have a really diverse uh, landscape of uh, applications, but also of platforms. We have some legacy services that we have to keep on running, um, but also uh, on, on the other hand, really new uh, services that are really cloud-based already. And uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a landscape that differs from a bare metal service, uh, just for, for performance uh, up to uh, Kubernetes environments, uh, which are uh, based on containers. And all those things have to work together uh, in, in a in reasonably fashioned way. Uh, so for the developers, they have to not just learn uh, how to orchestrate uh, the, the containers, but also how to get across the whole landscape of uh, diverse uh, scenarios and, uh, and services. What kind of things are the developers at KPM trying to achieve? And where does this pressure come from? You know, when they think about the apps they have to be building and getting to production. They, they need to build applications faster. Uh, less time for application development uh, and, and more uh, need of applications delivered faster. And you see the landscape of application development also changing into uh, more Kubernetes-like uh, applications. It's, it's microservices that's demanded. It has to be cloud native, uh, has to be possible to run on-premise, but also in the cloud. Containers, um, the, the big monolith are kind of gone. And um, therefore, cloud native applications is, is, is the uh, answer for developers. And with that, uh, Kubernetes environments and those Kubernetes environments uh, we need to offer. And nowadays we see uh, a lot of those development teams building their uh, operations uh, for just for Kubernetes environments. And that's kind of a, yeah, it's just, it should be happening like that. We should have uh, Kubernetes as a service instead of let developers uh, do the operational work. How are your developers kind of meeting their own needs today? And what does that create downstream for the IT team for operations and security? How does that impact you? And I know you've been excited about VMware's vSphere 7, which was previewed in August 2019 as Project Pacific. 
Well, at KPN, uh, development teams, uh, well, we have different developer teams. Uh, some of the developer teams are already uh, busy with Kubernetes uh, and implementing, implementing services on, on, on based on Kubernetes uh, cloud native applications, uh, but they all uh, face the same problem. They have to manage the Kubernetes environments themselves. So building a Kubernetes environment is not easy. Uh, we know that. And so the services that we could deliver with uh, Project Pacific uh, take a lot of work away from them. And so they can just focus on, on more on application development instead of uh, maintaining your Kubernetes environments. So the, the, um, we try to offer from our hypervised team, try to offer different services. And, and nowadays it's just uh, virtual machines uh, and in this soon we hope to offer containers as well. And containers uh, is something that developers need and container orchestration uh, with uh, Kubernetes is the next thing they need. And now we have operational teams within the developer teams working on Kubernetes. And that's kind of a, a shame. Uh, they should put their effort into building applications instead of doing the operational work on Kubernetes. That's why we think that uh, the Project Pacific is going to be a really, uh, yeah, it's, it's enabling us to provide Kubernetes as a service. Let's talk about security a little bit. When developers go off and configure their own environments or build their own platforms, configure their own cloud services, it can cause serious challenges when it comes to cybersecurity and compliance. How is your team managing that in your environment? Yes, uh, at KPN, uh, we also have a strict security policy. It's called KSP, KPN Security Policy. And that faces a lot of challenges for, for our developers as well. Uh, even with a Kubernetes environment on top of, of that, uh, it's not going to be easy for them. But we hope to achieve uh, um, a little more uh, with uh, implementing the SDN part. Uh, this can be provided by NSXT. So make it a bit easier then for, uh, and for the developers uh, to have more possibilities of uh, setting up their own Kubernetes environment. With NSXT, uh, we hope to uh, have to build more uh, kind of small bubbles for developers to do their stuff within and uh, it's a uh, well by base it's a zero trust network and and that's very good so uh, if something happens it only happens within their bubble and not affecting other uh, development teams or other tenants uh, within our platform so security uh, is a thing and yeah we have to solve a, a lot of uh, problems there but it, NSXT uh, and uh, Project Pacific, uh, I hope it makes it, uh, it a bit easier for them. And last question, Albert. If you could build your Utopia platform, the best case scenario, no budget, no restrictions, how would that look? Um, my Utopia platform would look like uh, one base layer, which can offer uh, all the services that uh, go from bare metal uh, up until a serverless and fast uh, services. And in between, you offer virtual machines, uh, containers, and Kubernetes environments, all in, a, in two different ways. In just a service, and the other way as a managed service. Some uh, departments are just not ready to handle the, the responsibility that come with a certain service, and they need help. They want to just focus on application development and, and not uh, be able uh, to do the operational uh, stuff on that. So therefore, uh, I see every service we can deliver from one platform uh, in two ways, in a managed and in an unmanaged way. So bare metals as a service, bare metals as a managed service, virtual machines as a service, and virtual machines as a managed service. Same goes for containers and Kubernetes environments, and later stage probably uh, the serverless and fast as well. Looking for a, a way uh, to implement uh, Kubernetes as a service for quite some time now, and it was a, a really nice surprise to see that Project Pacific came along and kind of filled in the, that gap. Uh, implementing uh, Kubernetes uh, is not a, a question of, of when, but about how for us, and uh, I think. Uh, um, VM and nailed that uh, really nice with Project Pacific. I'm Blakely Thomas Aguilar. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Big thanks to Albert Alberts and his team at KPM.
To learn more about application modernization, visit us at VMware.com. Until next time.